Hello folks and welcome to a video lecture on the homeostatic function of bones. One of the functions of bones I mentioned in a previous lecture is that bones act as a reservoir for minerals needed by cells in the body. Minerals make up about 77% of bone mass. Calcium and phosphate make up the bulk of these minerals. The mineral matrix of bone provide the hardness of bone, but are also needed by the cells to perform their various functions. When levels of these minerals are low in the blood, the bones release them into the blood to be delivered to the cells that need them. The endocrine system controls bone growth and health with various hormones secreted by various glands. The kidneys, pituitary gland, and the gonads, that is, the testes and ovaries, each secrete hormones needed for normal bone growth. But it's the thyroid and the parathyroid gland that are chiefly responsible for monitoring the levels of calcium in the blood. Too high or too low blood calcium and these glands respond with their respective hormones. The parathyroid gland secretes parathyroid hormone in response to low blood calcium levels. And the thyroid gland secretes calcitonin in response to high blood calcium levels. Each of these glands are located in the neck around the cartilage of the larynx near your Adam's apple. The thyroid is larger and secretes several other hormones responsible for your metabolism as well. There are four little parathyroid glands on the posterior side of the thyroid gland. Here's how it works. If blood calcium levels are too high, the thyroid gland responds by secreting the hormone calcitonin. Calcitonin has an effect on bone by causing osteoblasts, those are bone forming cells you remember to deposit more of the mineral on the bones. In the digestive system, calcitonin inhibits the absorption of calcium from the diet and the kidneys excrete more calcium than normal. This is an overall effect of eventually lowering, lowering blood calcium levels back to normal. If blood calcium levels are too low, the parathyroid glands go into action by secreting parathyroid hormone, or PTH for short. The effect of PTH in bones is for osteoclasts to dissolve the mineral matrix and release, release the minerals into the bloodstream. The digestive system is stimulated to absorb more calcium and other minerals from the diet, and the kidneys are stimulated to keep from excreting calcium into your urine. This back and forth balancing act is going on all the time. The hope is that we keep our bones healthy by providing proper nutrition that includes calcium. However, calcium is difficult for our, our intestines to absorb. Vitamin D helps our intestines to absorb calcium from our diets. Doctors recommend up to 3,000 milligrams of calcium per day and 4,000 international units of vitamin D each day. For homework, I'd like you to investigate some healthy sources of both calcium and vitamin D, other than supplements. How much of this food should be eaten to provide you with an adequate daily supply of calcium? Write them along with your notes and be ready to share them in class. It's not too difficult to keep a strong, healthy skeleton throughout your life. Unfortunately, disease of bone is more often due to an unhealthy lifestyle. The effects of the lifestyle typically don't show up until you're in your elder years, but by then it may be too late to reverse. Osteoporosis is the result of long-term demineralization of bone. The bones are much more brittle and can break during norm normal activity. As we age, bones normally lose minerals and lack the ability to rebuild our skeleton. The organic matrix is also degraded as the, as the osteoblasts have a hard time making the collagen. Proper diet and exercise habits started when we're young can stave off diseased bone and a premature death. So take care of those bones. I hope you learned something important and can share it with somebody else. We'll see you back in class. But until then, be well.